adopted. It's the same old story in our space. At the bottom of the market, there's never enough money. And at the top, there's always way too much. And we're barely off the bottom at this point in time. And there's a lot, a lot to go before we reach the top. If you look at gold itself, you just look at the gold ETF. Look at GLD. GLD is up over 900 tons this year alone, which is the biggest. They've had more inflow of money in the first nine months of this year than any year in the past 16 years. It's been public since 2004. So it's a record inflow of money into the gold GLD. And that's also a precursor, a precursor to what's happening in the equity sector. Don't forget, gold bottomed in in 2001 at $250 to rise to $1,900 by 2011. So the the rise in gold price, everybody thought would lead to enormous margin expansion, and the stock went up in 2003, four, five, six, seven. And then all of a sudden they all plateaued out and then finally they turned around in 2011 and they never got the kind of multiple that you were expecting because there wasn't any margin expansion and there are two reasons for that one is the oil price kept going up and energy as we know is 25 percent more or less of the cost of operating gold mines so as the energy price went from 25 dollars a barrel to 140 dollars a barrel the margins were not uh, expanding as fast. And then because during the late 90s, the gold price kept going down, mining companies essentially stopped exploration. And when the gold price started to come to come around, what they did, because they didn't have any reserve, they dropped their cutoff grade. And uh, so they were producing the same amount of gold, but moving twice as much dirt and that too costs a lot of money and you had no margin expansion. The difference today is very, very different. Number one, because oil prices are flatlining. The market is telling you the oil price is well fed. There's enough oil out there and it's going nowhere. So that's a 25% component of, of the miners, of their, their costs. And then, um, the uh, the other thing is that in the last 20 years in terms of cutoff gold miners have decreased their cutoff to the point now where open pit mining they're down at 0.05 of a gram in terms of cutoff well the next cutoff is dirt okay there's nothing left all right so the the open pit miners don't have any ability to increase their reserve even if you know because they can't cut their cutoff grade anymore they're they're down so that's a good thing because what it means that as the gold price goes up that difference will go right down to the margin and you got and you are seeing margin expansion the gold miners they have never had it so good the margins that they are producing are the fattest, the best, the absolute unbelievable margin they've ever had, ever. You know, it's interesting because a year ago when uh, we were talking about the gold price and I mentioned the Dow Gold the ratio, I did not know why, you know, why it would go to one to one. I. I you know, I, it was still hypothetical in my mind, like, you know, the ratio has been one to one twice in the past. I think we're going to get and then, you know, it, it takes a 40, 50 year period. If you look at 1930, 1980, sometime in the next five, 10 years, I think we're going to see one to one. But I didn't know how we're going to get there. Well, I think I've seen the answer in a sense that when you look at our neighbor to the south, the Federal Reserve, they are printing, you know, like three trillion dollars. They're talking of another package in the one trillion to two trillion. You look at what's happening in Europe, 700 billion of uh, package of rescue. The amount of debt that is being, take, being taken on by the various countries, they'll, it'll never be paid back. 
So how do they not raise taxes? Well, they don't have to raise taxes. The money is zero if you keep interest rate at zero. And that's what the Federal Reserve is doing. And that's what Japan has been doing for 20 years. Japan's debt to GDP is 230% going to 300. But they don't have to ever pay back the money because it's zero interest rate. In Germany, it's minus, it's 0.7. And that's what's going to happen in the U.S. We're going to end up with negative interest rates and possibly in Canada and government don't care. They can borrow all they want. If you again, it's if it's instructive to look at the past because the twice when it's happened, it's happened for a very different reason. Back in 1933, the, the Dow lost 90 percent of its value between 1929 and 1933. It went from 360 to 37. The gold price went from $20 to 36. OK, so, you know, the gold price almost double. But the Dow itself went down 90 percent in 1980. The Dow had gone down from essentially 1,000 to 600 from 1966 to 1980. It, it came back up to 800. But the gold price, as we all know, went from $35 to 800, which is 24 times, you know, from the beginning. So very, very different response at different times. This time around, it's hard to say because with the money that's floating around, it's hard to see the Dow going down to like 10,000 or 12,000. Could it happen? Yes, but I find it very difficult. Could it go down to 20? Very possibly. 17, yes. 15, could the gold price go up to 15,000? Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. But I don't think it's tomorrow morning. I think it's going to be sometime in the next five, to possibly as long as 10 years. The, 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 the key question here is how long is it going to be there? Don't forget that in 1980, the gold price was 800 for less than a day. Okay, let's be serious here. Uh, if you look at the entire quarter, the gold price was about 675. And if you average out for the year, it was less than 600. So yes, it did go to 800, but it was there literally for a day, okay? Now, uh, and in 1933, though, it, it went on a little bit longer than that, but it was certainly less than a year. I, I don't have the detail in front of me, so I can't really tell you, but I, I think it was, you know, probably closer to like three months or something like that. So the, the key question is, how long will that ratio be one to one? How long are we going to see the gold price at these, you know, crazy numbers? And then what will be the inflation? What's going to dollar be worth? Don't know.